Creative Excellence. I am your host, Davina Lee, and we are coming to you from the studios of the Government Information Service. This show seeks to give a better understanding of the artist's experience in St. Lucia. We discuss the work, the balance, the successes, and the aspirations. My guest today is part of the GIS family. He is usually on the other side of the camera, but today he gets mic'd up and sits down to have a conversation with me about his passion, art. I would like to welcome to Creative Excellence, Mr. Ross Daniel, Ross the Boss. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for having me. Welcome, Ross. So, you know, when um, guests come here, there is one question we always ask them. Mm. You're an illustrator, a painter, what else? A graphic designer, graphic an artist, editor, motion graphics, motion graphics animator, designer, all of that. All of that. But what do you call yourself? When somebody says, Ross, what are you? Mm -hmm. What do you call yourself? Yeah, it took me a while to answer that question because as a creative person, you evolve so much. Mm -hmm. And then initially, what you do, you call yourself after the mediums that you use to express your creativity. But I'm at a point where I just call myself visual storyteller because it encompasses all the things that I do. The that's, painting, that's the drawing, true. everything. It's all just mediums by which you express mm -hmm. that creative thing which is to tell a story to communicate something to somebody but in a visually appealing way that right. could be writing or anything okay. and when i call myself visual storyteller i also leave room for what the next thing might be you understand because yes. who knows i might be writing pretty soon exactly. i might be talking you know, exactly. I, and I am actually, a part of me i do a lot of preaching sometimes so okay. you never know how you maybe how we you can talk about it a little later maybe. on right so I want to talk about before the GIS, because I've met you here, GIS as a, well, a, a tech, you an editor, videographer, graphic, uh, motion graphics, mm -hmm. artist. But I want to know about the journey that brought you here. Before we got here, what is it that sparked that in you, that interest in art? Okay, so I started drawing from really young, when I was in primary school, from my primary school days. I used to do those Dragon Ball Z drawings. We used to <laughs> draw these characters and sell them a dollar or something so you could buy little snacks in the canteen and so forth. Right. That's where it started. But my art journey really took off when I entered St. Mary's College mm -hmm. under the tutelage of Ted Sandiford, who was okay. our, my art teacher. And he really, really, really helped me to, he really helped groom us to take, take art to the next level. So when I went to SMC, I brought my drawing skills there. Um, it was further honed by Ted Sandiford. Mm -hmm. and, but then... I can distinctly remember in about maybe form three, form four, when you're preparing for CXC, mm -hmm. I, could have, I could have drawn very well and we used to use a lot of colored pencils. But the thing about using colored pencils was mm -hmm. that it took a lot of time. You had to be shading, 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 and everybody was shading, shading, shading. So there was this Juniquil competition that St. Mary's had right. and I won it. I did a drawing and I won a box of acrylic paints. Oh, nice. And then from that time, I started to figure out how do you use paints? So I started to go online, look at other local artists like Christopher Cox and I started to mimic their work, try to paint just like them. Nice. And then eventually I started to go to class and when everybody else was shading, 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 I just did a painting in a few moments and then I used to get 20 out of 20. 10 right. Out of 10. So I was like, <laughs> then in like two weeks later, everybody else started to paint. <laughs> <laughs> so you were a leader, right? Right, yeah. So okay. from St. Mary's, I, I developed painting. Then after I left St. Mary's, one of the other things that Ted Sandiford was doing, he inspired me to go into animation and just mm. generally digital art because I used to see him sit in the art room with his, with his laptop and he had this pen and he used to draw on it and right. he used to do all these characters, the Coco Boy and Girard, and I was very inspired by that. So when I left St. Mary's, I started to um, take a more keen interest in animation. And I, sp I used to spend a lot of time on my computer just learning, learning. And at, at that time, you have a lot of technological limitations. Your laptop is very slow. Mm -hmm. So you do all kind of little makeshift things. And even in my latter part at St. Mary's, I remember I used to do these little funny cartoons of incidents that happened at St. Mary's. And the boys used to just love that. Did you sell like that you one retail too? stories. Nah. Because <laughs> <laughs> animation was so tedious. It was right. just too, it was too painstaking. But it was very fun to see people come to school the next day and boy, Ross drop a thing on Facebook and I was so funny and that kind right, of thing. Right. So that really made me more interested in animation. And then now, mm -hmm. I became an art teacher 
I okay. taught at at um, George Charles Secondary. Okay. Yeah, and then as a visual art teacher, I learned um, another component to art that I did not learn at Saint Mary, which is the crafts aspect. Um, mm -hmm. tie dyeing dresses, mm -hmm. using calabash, creating things like that. So that itself expanded my skill set in another way. Mm -hmm. And then from teaching now, I came to GIS. Now, okay. when I came to GIS, I was not a graphic artist. Mm -hmm. I was not a videographer. I was okay. not an editor. I played with a few little things, but I was none of those things. I learned all of that here on the job. Oh, okay. I, when I sat behind my computer, the director or the PIU at the time would come to tell me, Ross, um, do a montage for me. I don't even know what's a montage. <laughs> But I would just quickly just <laughs> right, run right, online, right. go on YouTube, watch a ton yeah. of tutorials, and I would just whip up something and they would come and they would be very impressed and I was like, nice. wow, this is really so, cool. So like this natural talent is in you. So. Yeah, but the natural progression of things where you would just keep feeding that passion and you would just develop something, develop something new. And that's how it happened. Mm -hmm. And I learned so much mm -hmm. just being at the GS okay. in front of a computer. But I want to step back just a little because you spoke about your experience at SMC with Ted Sandy for mm -hmm. and so on. But I want to know, apart from Ted, did you feel nurtured by the education system, how it catered to artists? Did you feel something was lacking or did you feel that it was mm. the education, you, the formal education you received in that area? Mm. Were you satisfied with it? Did you feel nurtured by it? At St. Mary's, I was very much satisfied because art was like my cool out mm -hmm. from everything else because I was kind of narrow minded in the sense where I really, really love art above everything else. Everything was just, you doing that because you have to pass, you have to do school. But when it came to art, I was giving it everything. So having a good art teacher, and I can really vouch for Ted Sanifor because I can remember he used to actually sacrifice some of his own paintings when he saw that I was developing an interest in painting. He used nice. to give, because paint is very expensive. Brushes were very expensive. They're going to have Ted on the show. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. So he used to sacrifice some of it. So that aspect, but... Where it, really, where, it, where it was really lacking for me was when I went to um, Sir Alpha Lewis. There weren't any really art subjects there because mm -hmm. I did literature, business, and so things that were not and things that were not closely related to visual arts. So there, it was really bad for me as a creative person because I felt famished creatively. Okay. So I'm happy now that they have implemented things like digital media. Right, that's awful. Yeah. Yes. But um, growing up, um, school, just in your personal life, did you look up to any of, like, who we call the greats? There's the Van Goghs, the Rembrandts, mm. um, Picasso, or any of our local heroes? Were they people yeah. that you looked up to as the artist that I look up to this great? Yeah. Honestly, m when I started painting, mostly my inspiration came from local artists like Sabrina Romulus, whose painting is behind you. Um, but Christopher Cox was, like, my idol because he used to paint a lot of wildlife, like parrots and stuff. And the way he had those vibrant colors, it's like I used to almost drink when I used mm, to look at his mm, paintings. It mm. just, it was just such a really good expression of St. Lucia and nature and the wildlife of St. Lucia. He really did it well. And the colors, it's almost like the colors he used look like the colors on the St. Lucian flag almost right. all the time. So I was very impressed like that to the point where I almost used to, I almost used to copy his work. Mm. So he was like, and probably you still You ever got a chance is. to meet him? Yeah, I met him a few times. Probably still okay. is. When it comes to painting, my number one inspiration. Okay, that's nice. I love his work, yeah. That, that's good. Um, so, you call yourself a visual storyteller. Mm -hmm. What type of stories do you want to tell with your, with your work, with your art? Mm -hmm. well, is there anything like, yes, you have to do certain things for work and so on, mm -hmm. but if you, Ross, just on your own, had to tell stories with your mm -hmm. art, what type of stories? So, there are two facets to that. Um, one, when it comes to communication. So, with, rela with, re with relation to communication, because I was a teacher, I understand what it's like to, do you have the need to communicate things, whether it be to students or to other people, like I'm in a communication department, GIS, mm -hmm. and to be able to communicate something with, with visual clarity, but at the same time have it appealing, that's one aspect of it, of the type of stories or things I want the to kind communicate. Of work you want to do. Yeah, I want to be able to communicate things as mundane or boring it might be. I want to be able to communicate it in a way that is still appealing or attractive in some way. The other aspect is I like telling stories that are relatable to like St. Lucian culture or take St. Lucian culture, package it into something that is appealing mm -hmm. and express it to people. There is that thrill. And I don't know if that's because I came from a very cultural background because I'm from Monrepo where there is a lot of Yes, culture and things same. like that mm -hmm. yeah so i grew up there even if i didn't stay there long but i feel like that element 
it's still running through my veins. Right. So I like to tell St. Lucian stories. Like I take inspiration from like, let's say you want to bus on a bus driver, say or do something silly. Mm -hmm. I would just go in my phone and write that down. Right. I see. Like, I can put that into an animation or something yes. that I could put that online and make people. Because I really get satisfaction when people are thrilled by your like. Yes. They get wow, something. Wow, and I always notice, like, when I used to do those little funny little animation things, it was, it was in such a way where people used to want to replay it over and over. Like, I can't right, stop watching right, that. Right, right. And I realized that's the kind of thing I want to convey or want to grab people. I want, I want them to be able to want to watch mm -hmm. that same thing because mm -hmm. they relate to it in such a deep way because yes. it's so Saint Lucian, it's so, yes. you know, relatable. Even like with your intros for GIS, and I was like, oh, that's really good, you know. <laughs> like right. you know, so that you played over and over. Right. I mean, that really up the standard, made things mm -hmm. look more modern and stuff for us. But since we reach on GIS, um, I want to talk about balance because for this show, one of the main focuses I want us to, mm -hmm. main thing I want to focus on is balance. Because there are a lot of artists who are not just artists where they can go to the studio and paint and they have the freedom to do that or to write right. or whatever. Most artists in St. Lucia have to balance their mm -hmm. passion with a nine to five. So what is, is there a method that you have to balance? Yeah, so that was one of the biggest struggles and to an extent still is for me because when you have a job and eight hours you out, you cannot just go and do a painting or do something like that. Mm -hmm. So one way, what I used to do was try to infuse creativity in the work that I do here. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes, you know, it's you say it's government work, it's boring. But then it took me a while to kind of mature and to realize, hey, like, that's your job. How can you express yourself through the work that you do, you know? That's one way. Mm -hmm. And the thing is, I looked at what, what around me that I can use as mm -hmm. creative inspiration. What, 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 okay. I'm at a GI, there's a lot of content, there's a lot of footage. Um, I come across different events and activities that happen culturally. Mm -hmm. All these things, sometimes I save them on my personal um, storage device, right. whether it be carnival um june Quill, i save those things as reference for the future and i even if mm -hmm. i cannot work on it now i said at some point in time i will mm -hmm. be inspired by that cruel thing or that silver shadow dancer event mm -hmm. or whatever it is so that's one way i try to look for what around me there's like a library of footage here so mm -hmm. there's so much things that you can the other thing is i'm always in front of a computer yes and the fact that i'm always in front of a, com a computer every morning i come Mm -hmm. I have these web these websites with art like art station. I go mm -hmm. on it and I just look at stuff. So what I do, if I am not immediately able to produce or create anything, I assimilate. I just take in, take in mm -hmm. stuff, take mm -hmm. in stuff, take in stuff, and I realize like as a creative person, at some point in your journey, all that stuff that you have acquired, assimilated, will yeah. manifest. Yes. At some point. At so some point. One day you yes. might come to me and you tell me, Ross, can you do this? Mm -hmm. And I say, ah, I know what I'll do. Yes. Because that's you not just magic. Yes. It's because you have all that stuff stored at the back mm -hmm, of your mind mm -hmm. over months and sometimes years. So constant years. learning. Right. Constant so I'm just constantly assimilating. I'm constantly watching tutorials. And that's the advantage of being in front of a computer. I am always learning, especially the 3D aspect of things, which is so complicated, so vast, you will never, ever stop learning. Right. Very so that's one way I balance it out. And um, But generally, I just spend a lot of time. When I go mm. home, yeah. any free time I get, and if my wife was there, she would tell you that I'm mm -hmm. just sitting in front of my computer. Right. Almost look like I'm bumming sometimes. And sometimes I stay yes. up really late just watching tutorial. What's the next thing? Or stay abreast with the new technology. What's the next thing? What's the next thing in video? What's the next thing in graphics? What's the next thing in CGI, 3D, animation, gaming? Everything that is creative or has something to do with creativity. I'm constantly just feeding off that. Yes. Okay, so we spoke about GIS on your work at GIS. Mm -hmm. We had a chance to work on a very interesting program, which is something I, 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 I think will be exciting. The show is not out yet. Mm -hmm. Something we did in collaboration with the Taiwanese Embassy, and it's called Fun Mandarin. Mm -hmm. You had a chance to, you were the one who came up with the intro graphics. You were the one who was the editor, the videographer, the everything, mm -hmm. <laughs> and so on. So we're gonna take a we, we can't show the full we can show the full um program, but we will show a snippet of fun mandarin, which I can say most of it visually is Ross's creation. Welcome to Fun Mandarin. I'm Tintin from Taiwan Technical Mission. What do you know about Mandarin? 
Well, first one, I would like to talk about characters. It seems complicated. Actually, it is. Characters are very different from the alphabet system. For beginners, we use pinyin to assist. Pinyin is a tool to help with pronunciation, listening, and speaking. To be honest, there is no pinyin in real life. So it's better if learners can recognize and remember characters. It takes time to learn characters. So we just put it behind right now. OK, so that was for Mandarin. Um, so Ross, what was it like to work on a program like this? I mean, learning Mandarin, what was that like? <laughs> and, and the characters too, because you had to put in the characters and so on. Right, so that's, that one was a bit new to me because you have to be very, how would I say, careful in terms of, you can't do too much because it's more about clarity because you need to teach people something. So I had to reach back into that teacher. Right. You know, or reach back into the archives of all that information I stored about teaching and so forth. Mm -hmm. And how do I disseminate that, disseminate that really, really clearly with clarity for people. So um, one of the first things I do, I go online to see if there's anybody doing something similar, similar to that. Um, teaching languages and things like that. I gather little references to see and I, I take the best thing from my references. Um, but that's really my process at first. But with that one, there was not much. I mean, I think you gave me some little mm -hmm. things to look at. Mm -hmm. But my, my main thing was to, how can I do this clearly? So I had to keep it very simple. Mm -hmm. That was a focus. It's not just making mm -hmm. it look nice, mm -hmm. but... It was simple, clear. but it was visually appealing, and it was clear right. as well. It was all of that. Sometimes that's hard to do. Yeah, sometimes that's very hard to do. And I also... The thing is, I do a lot of background research. So if it's mm -hmm. Taiwanese, I try to see, okay, Taiwanese. What about Taiwanese culture? Even if it's just a hint, mm -hmm. colors or something, mm -hmm. I try to infuse... The way the I intro do. pops up. Right. The way the intro is done, I try to... I show a little bit of St. Lucia and Taiwan because it's a partnership thing that we're doing. I always do a background check in everything that I do, mm -hmm. you know. So that was, that was that's an in, a really interesting project. Yeah, for me. and I'm really I'm looking forward to when the yeah. public can get to see that mm -hmm. show. And um, what I want to talk about is excelling, um, doing the best you can where you are. What advice would you have so, for someone? How do you say? What is the motivation? How can you motivate yourself to excel, even mm -hmm. if it's your passion? or your nine to five, what is it that you say mm -hmm. to yourself? I have to be the best, I have to do the best. Mm -hmm. All right, so I don't know if it's a, creative, a creativity thing, but passion is the first thing. And I don't know if you can manufacture passion, I don't know if you can mm -hmm. teach passion, I don't know mm -hmm. if it's something innate, but the passion I've had for art, it's like a flame inside of you. And irrespective of what you do, it's very hard to quench. It's insatiable. It's a, a thirst to create. That's, that's where it all starts. And then now that branches out to different things. So that now, it has to work in tandem with your disciplines, your lifestyle and things mm -hmm. like that. Because if you're not disciplined, even if you have a passion, you still need to a lot of time. You still mm -hmm. need to work, do certain things in your life. You cannot spend time doing certain things. So there's a discipline or a character element to that as well. Mm -hmm. to help steward that passion, which I believe is from God. Like God put yes. that in you, that thing to create, mm -hmm. and you now have to steward it and mm -hmm. nurture it in a certain way. So first thing is passion. Then now you need to figure out how do I keep that passion going. So for example, for me, working in government, there was a certain point in time where I was frustrated. Like I felt like, boy, that passion go die. Boy, you're in government work and you're mm -hmm. doing things again for yourself. Right. But how you, how you will keep that passion going? Then now I had to find disciplines, you understand, to keep my passion going. So one of the things I do is I look at a lot of stuff. Discipline yourself. Well, it's not really a discipline because it comes natural to mm -hmm. look at other art. Because what I've noticed was when I stop immersing myself in art, like let's say for a while I stop looking at other what artists are doing, other things, that kind of passion kind of it dims a bit, it wins. Mm. But when you look at a lot of stuff, it inspires you to create. So when I see, boy, right. oh boy, I'm gonna do a bad piece of thing there. Right. I get an idea one time, yes, you know? Yes, yes. So you get you get thrilled by other artists' work. Yes. So that keeps your you passion excited. going. That's one thing. The other okay. thing too, and when I talk about discipline and your lifestyle, there are things that could, sad to say, could kill your passion in terms of how you live your own life. You understand? So 
my I guess my Christian um, life, my Christian beliefs kind of come in there because there are certain things I don't do. I discipline myself, and it's not to judge anybody, but mm -hmm. like I don't party and things like that. I don't drink. I don't smoke or anything. It, people might think that's disconnected from that, but I don't think it is because when I could have been wasting time doing something else. I could put that into my art. So I right. maximize the amount of time that I put mm -hmm. into developing my craft. And I think that's what, in a sense, might set me apart from other people because of the amount of time I spend doing what I do. You understand? And you mm -hmm. need support to do that, of course. Yes. Because you, I mean, I have a wife yes. home. And you have so to be, has to be a supportive partner and understanding Right, and understanding, understanding because when you're an artist, it's almost like you, you're crazy. Mm -hmm. You're not a normal person. No. You understand? Because there are times when my wife would have to take on a lot of the chores. I'm not lazy. I mean, it's not like I don't want to do chores. Um, he said he's not lazy. But, okay. <laughs> but let your wife the, answer that question. That passion for art, it mm -hmm. supersedes everything else. So even sometimes you need to check yourself. Because if you don't check yourself, it will almost just... Yes. It will take over it's you. It will do things. You know? Even mm -hmm. at work. Sometimes mm -hmm. you give me a project and I, mm -hmm. as soon as you get it, boy, I have one bad piece of idea. Yes, yes. But then you don't uh, have enough time. So you yes, need to dismiss like, okay, Ross, Ross, you only have three days. Yeah, I say, Ross, we need something, you know, looking good but simple. He say, okay, sure. Then I come back. I need something complicated, you know. Yeah. <laughs> it's always I need something complicated. Yeah, because um, the first concept you have, yeah, but yeah, the thing yeah. is, that's where maturity and discipline comes in, where you mm -hmm. need to understand certain things have timelines. And it's not mm -hmm. necessarily what you want to do, what mm -hmm. the person wants. These are things you just learn through working with people, working with mm -hmm. a team, having a superior person, mm -hmm. you know, having another eye. You're not just left your own devices. Because people think once you're creative, boy, go and do your own thing by yourself. But I think being in a structure, mm -hmm. being being a team player, being in, in an organization mm -hmm. benefits you in a certain way. Okay. Even if you, even if the at certain points right, the feedback is very vital. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It keeps you in check that you're not just a fire that is running wild. Because right. that passion can be like that. Mm -hmm. So having feedback from your superior, like yourself, mm -hmm. getting the other eyes of your colleagues, mm -hmm. pointing out things to you, that refines you. Okay. So talking about GIS, one day um, I came to the office. I went to your, I think it was your office, and I'm talking to Ross. Um, hey, Ross, you know. I'm talking to the person. The person is looking like Ross. The mannerisms is Ross. Until the person says to me, you looking for us? <laughs> <laughs> Then I realized I was talking to your twin brother. Mm -hmm. So today on the show, we have in studio Ross's twin brother, Rosen. <laughs> so welcome, Rosen, to the program. <laughs> We're happy to have you here. And Rosen is an artist as well. Yes. So how, what was that like growing up in a household where two brothers, did your parents have a tough time? <laughs> what was that like? <laughs> well, I'm from a very young age. As you know, we are twins. Me and Ross, we were, we were very, um, we were inseparable, right? We did a lot of things together, almost everything together. We'd eat together, we'd sleep together, we'd go out and play together. And we were just very active in the community. And most of his story is the same as mine. So we went through the same direction and we kind of diverted at some point, but for say from primary school all the way up to secondary school, we took basically the same path. Um, I, think, I don't think it was very hard for my parents, except that they couldn't really calm our energy. <laughs> right. We used to go out and play, and we used to come back late, and our parents would beat us sometimes. <laughs> because you know, we don't know when to stop being inactive. You know, we don't want to stop being active. We would just go and go and go. We were like energizers, right? Mm -hmm. And that also played a part into our athletics, because we were very much involved in athletics too, even before the arts. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So tell me, um, what was that like growing up in a family where did you feel nurtured? Because for those who don't know, their dad is, you know, <coughs> media stalwart, Shelton Daniel. So do you think that his knowledge of media, his knowledge of, mm -hmm. you know, um, influenced you in any way? Did you feel nurtured in that home environment with your art? You know, sometimes people grow up and it's like, why you want to do art? Go and go study finance, study law, study, you know, that kind of thing. But what was that environment like for you at home? Yeah, that's actually a very good point. Uh, even if we may, not, we may not have been exactly in what my father does, but my father, as you well know, he's a very um, outspoken person. And when he speaks, sometimes he will give us stories and he would describe it so detailed and so mm. creatively. I think he's that a visual storyteller he's a, too. He's also a visual storyteller because when he expresses himself, I mean, he brings you into his world. 
just the way he talks and the way he, he describes things. And I think subconsciously that pl played a part into our own in creativity. With also our eldest brother, um, we have two eldest brothers. One okay. of them, he also did a lot of drawing. Okay, and so he was the one we began to emulate family. in okay. primary school. And that's where all the art started for us. Yeah. You know, oh, drawing right. those little cartoon characters, Dragon Ball Z, like <laughs> Ross said. <laughs> the other thing I want to say about my father too is, he's a tech person, like he loves mm -hmm. a lot of gadgets. And the thing is, he's, he's very keen on mastery, like whatever he does, he masters it. Because I used to see how, see how he, he used to prepare for his talk shows. Right. And he would research, he would read, he would call people all over the world to make sure you had his facts straight. Right. So that kind of ability to master certain things mm -hmm. and to make sure you were... And to excel in whatever to excel, you choose. excel, yes. I think we got that from him. But the mm -hmm. other side was my mom now. Mm -hmm. The one thing about my mom is when it comes to investing in your talent, right. she had that on point. Like, okay. mommy, I want a, a video game. No. I have money for that. Right. I want a bicycle. No. Right. Anything that would make us brain dead or waste time, yes. she would never get it for us. Right. But when we started to paint and mommy, we needed art supplies, right. sketch pads, things like that, mm. she would get it. Okay. She would find the money to get those things. So mm -hmm. what she was doing, she was investing in the things that would make us excellent. And that was very right. tactful on her part. So you guys really had a nurturing environment because most artists, I don't think, have that. Right. That is what helps you to excel, I believe, that you know that like you have the parents mm -hmm. that are there and they nurture your, nurture your true, passion. Yeah. And older brothers too. Right. You are always ahead of your peers because your brothers already show you seen right. before. <laughs> yes, yes. So even at school, in primary school, we would know a lot of things because they would show us a lot of things mm -hmm. ahead of time, you know. So, Rosen, like I spoke to Ross earlier about balance because mm -hmm. balancing his 9 to 5, balancing... Um, his passion with his work. You also have a 95. You are a teacher at at your alma mater. Yeah. Um, what has that been like, and how have you been able to balance your passion with your? But then you're an art teacher, so you're kind of lucky there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so actually, that's a very good question, and wow, I don't even know how to begin to answer it. But um, I happen to know a little bit of things about balance because I've had to balance a lot of things. Because there was a point in my life where I was doing the art, you know, I was teaching, and I was into athletics, okay? And some of my friends that know me, they ask me how I do all those things. Right. You know, and the truth is, you do that by <laughs> losing out on a lot of sleep, okay? And waking up early, and like Ross said, letting that passion sometimes, not totally consume you, but letting it get ahead of you. Because once that passion burns, mm -hmm. guarantee you, it will bring you places. Um, when you don't have that extra strength, because maybe you want to sleep and you're tired, that passion, sometimes it will supersede that, that tired feeling that you have. And it will bring you the extra mile to complete that project that you have or to do that thing that you have. So it's really about passion. If you don't have mm -hmm. passion, mm -hmm. then you're missing that, probably that one element, you know, that will get you that extra mile. Mm -hmm. So I, I would say <laughs> if, you, if you have a lot of things doing, especially if you're very diverse, you're very versatile, you need to ensure that you're very passionate about what you're doing, okay? That will even out, you know, between the things that you are trying to um, um, balance. Right, understood. Now, you a teacher at SMC. What is it that you instill in your students? Um, is there anything specific that you, something special that you will try to instill in them, whether it's just as a student or as in their art? Yeah. Um, like you said, one of the benefits of teaching is that it keeps me into the arts. Because um, sometimes when you're trying to balance different things, for example, maybe I'm in athletics, I'm coaching sometimes, um, sometimes I'm in music, I play an instrument, and I may not get enough time to maybe work on that painting or to maybe um, work on that little illustration. Um, but just going into school and teaching the students, you find a lot of times that when you teach the students, you yourself teach yourself and you also inspire your own self. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of things that I do when I teach is I look for the feedback of the students, a reflection of my own self. Mm -hmm. So based on how the students learn, based on how they respond to what I teach them, that also tells me a lot about myself. You know, am I doing it well? Am I showing them that, 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 that illustration well? Am I teaching it well? It gives me a lot of feedback to myself. Now to answer your question, what exactly do I go there to show them? What exactly do I go there to, um, to really make them see? Because at the end of every class, I want my students to go with something. 
And probably the most important thing for me is letting them know no matter what you do, you need to enjoy what you do. Okay? And I have a lot of students that want to pick art every year for CXE. And the first thing I tell them, do you like art? Mm. Do you really want to do this? Some of them say yes, right. without even thinking about it. Some of them, they think about it. And usually the students that think about it, <laughs> sometimes they end up dropping the subject. Okay. Because they don't really enjoy the subject. Mm -hmm. So I really try to encourage my students, even if they, you're frustrated just doing something. Because there's a lot of frustration that accompanies art. Because it's not easy. Mm -hmm. Okay, and my students, they realize that because sometimes they try to do something and they cannot get it. And sometimes I go on a canvas and I do it in five minutes. Okay, I really tell them, first thing you need to do is relax and just be free. Just mm -hmm. paint. Just start painting and just enjoy what you do. And before you know it, they get into a groove. Right. right? And sometimes the thing they couldn't even, they couldn't do, they, now they can do it. Right. All right. Okay, there was something I asked Ross earlier about growing up in your, the education system. Mm -hmm. um, did you feel that there was this nurturing thing? And if there was something um, that you could add or advise on to put into the education system for art students that m was missing when you were growing up through primary school, through secondary school, if there was something that was missing that you would like to see instilled now, or is it already there? Yeah. Um, art is a little bit tricky because it stands apart from all the other subjects. I would say the other subjects are very structured. You know, there's a curriculum, for example, mathematics, you teach the formulas, you teach um, certain subtopics of mathematics, and it's very structured. But art is, a very, is very different. And I don't know if you know that at SMC we kind of battle with the pass rate in art. Because it's a very tricky subject. Mm, subject because you're too. teaching something that you don't necessarily have the knowledge to teach. It has to come from within the students themselves. Because you're trying to um, invoke the creativity that's in them. You're trying to bring it out of them. So I would say that's a very tricky question to figure out, you know, what mm -hmm. can we do to add? But what I would say, for the most part, is to find um, teachers, and not just teachers, surround the students with things that really bring out that creativity, that flame that we're trying to stoke into them. In other words, develop a culture of art around the students because it's really that's what's going to bring that out of them. You know, they see seen art all around them. You know, the teacher, myself, being the artist that I want them to be because I cannot come to the students and try to teach them something that I myself don't know. Mm -hmm. So every time I teach a bunch of students, I come, I tell them, Here's my artwork. I show them it first and I tell them, guys, that's the litmus test. Okay? Mm -hmm. Try to do a painting better than what I'm doing. You know? Just by doing that to them, it raises their level of thinking, their level of expectation in the arts. You see, so that do that, so that body. <laughs> then, guess what? You know, you can do that. I started doing that right here at SMC. I tell all my students that, you know? Mm -hmm. And it raises the expectations of the subject. So art is really about an environment. Mm -hmm. um, the thing too, very important in a subject like that is mentorship. Um, do, do you find that you, did you have a mentor? Is there somebody, both of you, did you guys have mentors that um, assisted you on your journey that you looked up to and so on? Yes, very much so. And also apprenticeship, so. because I think apprenticeship is right. another aspect that's very important. Yes, very much so. And Ross spoke a little bit about Ted Sandy Ford, mm -hmm. which was probably our main mentor going to SMC. He was our art teacher, but also he was a little extra. And one thing Ross didn't mention is that even out of school, when Ted had little projects, especially those he don't really have the time for, he used to call me and Ross. He used right. to call, he used to have his little art troupe, a, a, a set of art students that he could depend on to do little projects. Nice. And one time we even did um, a refreshing of the mural at SMC, you know, and it was me, Ross, and a couple of other art students. It was like Ted's own entrusted art group. Right. He would bring to do those little <laughs> projects, you know, when he had time for that, he would just follow, <laughs> just throw it on us right. because we were very young at that time okay. and we were very passionate about doing those little things. And Ted, you know, he was more into his graphics, more into his animation. Mm -hmm. So he didn't really have time to spend on those things. And we were very excited when Ted would call us. Right. Because it's very good to see that your he own art teacher you. trusts you to do those big projects. And he did trust us. Mm -hmm. And that in itself showed us how much Ted viewers, how much 
he thought about us and how much he also viewed our talent and appreciated it, you know. Mm -hmm. And I even remember when, when we finished that mural at SMZ, he was asking Mr. Sion, you know, Mr. Sion, give us a little change <laughs> for doing that. And, you know, and he and Ted told us, um, look at the benefit of what you're doing. You're developing mm -hmm. your talent and not only that, you're showcasing it for the world. And up to this day, the mural is there and mm -hmm. people looking at it. And you could see our little signatures on it. We mm -hmm. So at the end of the day, the, right, exactly. <laughs> the value we got was not in money. You know, mm -hmm. it was in development, it was in growth. And nice. that was what Ted really did in us. He developed us, he grew us, and he, he really nurtured our talent. Yeah. Nice. But beyond that is YouTube, mm -hmm. Google, and gigs yeah. of tutorials. <laughs> yes, yes. After SMC. Because one of our guests pre um, previously, VHL, he said, YouTube is yeah. your mentor. Like, you know, you can go on there and find anything. Yeah. And that's the thing. We have no excuse now. It's so easy to access knowledge and information. It's just discipline and passion. Yes. So right now, we're going to take a look at some of Rosen's work. And let's take a look at that right now. some of Rosen's work very good um, very very good um, but now we're going to take a look so, at some of Ross's work and it's a compilation of his personal passion projects as well as some of the stuff he's done here at the GIS <laughs> work and if you want to see even some more of Ross's work you can you know log on to our platforms the the government of St. Lucia platforms you'll see a lot of his work um so guys I have a question because you are twins mm -hmm. and the question I'm sure twins get asked all the time who was born first <laughs> <laughs> is it Ross or Rosen they, they say it's Rosen <laughs> yeah they say we can only say what they told us, you know, we don't know for sure. <laughs> how how do you not know for sure? They said I was born earlier, but you know, there was times in our life when Ross was getting taller than me, and I was getting taller than him, so <laughs> who <Right>? knows? <laughs> but I think Ross mentioned something that, you know, he used to lead and he used to, you know, Yeah, copy. I always joke about that because we, we, from the time we were growing up, we had this healthy competition where if Rosen starts something, I can't let him get ahead of me. I have to start it and be better than him, so we'll also try to be better. So when we were drawing, we would try to beat each other and we'd, we'd compete join when, when he started painting we were trying to compete in painting mm -hmm. but right now i always joke about he doing everything after me so maybe i'm ahead now because i think he got <laughs> married after me <laughs> <laughs> he bought his display tablet that we do our digital art on after me <laughs> <laughs> so he, he bought his vehicle after me <laughs> does so his vehicle so look like your vehicle <laughs> yeah it's white just like mine so i'm saying maybe right now i'm ahead and he's trying to catch up you understand <laughs> Uh, you're not going to defend and he, was a, he, he became a teacher after me. Oh wow! So you going to defend yourself? Rosen? One of the nah, things of doing it after defend. him is that you learn from his mistakes. <laughs> 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 so every time I do it after him, I do it better. Okay, that's <laughs> a good one. <laughs> so guys, I mean, it's been really enjoyable talking to you. Um, if there's advice you can give to anyone, your peers, mm -hmm. students, anyone, how do you bloom where you are planted? How do you find your passion where you at or how do you you know pursue what you want even if not where you want to be like it might be a gis but it's not where you want to be but mm -hmm. how do you bloom uh, you might be a teacher now but then 
you have this passion building inside you and it's not where you want mm -hmm. to be. Mm -hmm. What advice would you have for someone like that? Let's start with Rosen. Um, what I would say first and foremost is to surround yourself with like-minded people. Um, if, for example, you're an artist, you're a young artist growing up, um, it's very important that you find other artists that are around, local artists, and it could be that, that, that one sentence that they say to you of encouragement that changes your life forever. Okay, so if you surround yourself with these people, their influence on you also will propel you forward. Okay, because they've been there already. You have, we have so many great artists here in St. Lucia. And like Ross said, Christopher Cox, we have, we have the St. Omers, we have so many different artists. When, when I look at their work, when I inspire myself from their work, that propels me forward into my own field. Um, Ross? Well, for me, um, you may not be in favor, under favorable circumstances, but what's the next best thing you can do to advance yourself? So I mentioned earlier about like, maybe at, in government, I do maybe mundane work, but how can I do that mundane thing in a way that is excellent or the best way I can do it? You understand? So lately I found myself doing a lot of statements for minist ministers, ministerial mm -hmm. statements, and I always try to do it better than the last one. You understand? I research, I do things. So just excel in your craft. Wherever you are right now, do the best that you can. Now, you might not be making profit from it, you understand? You might not be benefiting financially from it. But what I realize is you don't know the future. S the things that you are doing today mm -hmm. are preparing you for tomorrow, and you don't know that. So there may have been a time where I could have never imagined myself having a digital a display that you can draw directly on, you understand? But things will come across. Technology will get better, and other and doors will open. But if you don't steward today well, you will not be ready for tomorrow. So what's the mm -hmm. best thing you can do right now? If, if it means doing well on your job and um, getting the best outcome that you come for your boss or for your superior and doing things well there, it doesn't matter. Do it because sometimes your superior will be the one that will speak to you or share or talk about you to somebody or to a minister or to somebody important mm -hmm. and things go around very quickly and before you know it, mm -hmm. you, are, you, are, you are at the next level. Mm -hmm. Nice. And stay inspired by, for me as an artist, look at what other people are doing. Mm -hmm. Understand? Some people think it just entirely emanates from within. No, I think it's like a bouillon. You put different things in mm -hmm. one and you create mm -hmm. your own version or your, your own, own variation. Soup. Yeah, your own little soup. Mm -hmm. So, Rosen, before we close, let me ask you. So, what, if somebody had to ask you, what is your ultimate goal? What, mm -hmm. what do you see for yourself that you want your ultimate goal? And you'll say, yes, that's it for me. Um, my ultimate goal is to reach the fullest potential um, with respect to my talent. Now, <laughs> nobody knows what that looks like, mm -hmm. but I believe, just because I've looked at other artists that feel that way, that you can reach a point where you yourself are satisfied with where you are in life. And Ross could tell you that now you're probably never satisfied with anything that you do as a young artist because you mm -hmm. always feel like there is something more there is that step of improvement that you can achieve. So my ultimate goal, however far in the future it may be, is to reach that point where I say, you know, the way I always vision myself as an artist, I'm finally there. Mm -hmm. So it's something within, not necessarily anything external that I want to accumulate to myself. Okay, very, very... Yeah, very interesting answer. It's really up there, you know. <laughs> very interesting way to, to view that, that question. Um, Ross? Your ultimate goal? My ultimate goal? That's in life or only in the creative? Because that's so, that's let's, so let's profound. Let's say creative, <laughs> creatively. Well, um, I think there's a little song I, I sing in church that I like. It says, brighten the corner where you are. How can I bring something new and something different wherever I'm planted? You understand? Um, so today I might be GIS, tomorrow I might be somewhere. But how can I change the game or bring something different and express. It's almost like, that might sound really up there, really cryptic, but it's like, how can you manifest God wherever you are mm -hmm. in, your, in your arts? Because mm -hmm. 
people you might enter a realm where people are doing things a certain way and then you come in and you just shift things and turn it that different mm -hmm. people are like wow like mm -hmm, mm -hmm. this is different but this is good different you know mm -hmm. so i want to be able to manifest creativity in a way that assists helps mm -hmm. and communicates develops wherever i am at the time that could be in church that could be at work mm -hmm. that could be in school whatever mm -hmm. but i really want to it might be funny, I want to take what in heaven and bring it down mm -hmm, to earth. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and and uh, my creativity would mm -hmm. be that channel. I guess I think being a creator is the closest you can get to being closest mm -hmm. to God. Yeah, and that's something I creator. always say because he the Bible says in the beginning, God created. created. exactly. You understand? So I think that's where that comes. You know, that's funny. Yeah? I just want to mm -hmm. say something really quickly on that. That's funny. Yeah? There was a point in my life, even as a young Christian, I used to ask myself, how do I... What do I do with my creativity as a Christian? Because sometimes when mm -hmm. you go to church, there is not really a language, a culture around arts. There's no, no one to explain to you. You're a Christian, but you're also a creative person. How do you live? Because you're different than most other Christians. Mm -hmm. Until I read a verse in the Bible, and it spoke about a guy named Bezalel, and the Bible described him as having um, um, skills in crafts, and he, used to, uh, he was a craftsman, and he used to mm -hmm. create stuff. And this guy helped build a whole temple in the Bible. Mm -hmm. And I said, but wait. The Bible says God anointed that man mm -hmm. to have, and I said, ah, that's it yes, there. Yes. God anointed you yes. to be that person for yes. a specific purpose. You might not understand it now, but right now, you like a book, but you may be just on chapter two, mm -hmm. but you maybe have a hundred other chapters mm -hmm. left. Mm -hmm. So just steward today well. Yes. I think as creators, we are God's favorites. That's just, that's just <laughs> less I'm than highly favored. <laughs> we are God's favorites. Yeah. Um, but you mentioned that you sing a song in church. So you want to take us out with that song? Oh <laughs> Rose? <boy. laughs> it's very simple. Rose and sing back up. <laughs> uh, uh, Rose might know that song. Very simple. Um, the chorus goes like this. Brighten the corner where you are. That's sing it, simple. sing it, sing it, sing it, sing it, sing it, sing it, That's all you know. No, Rossi, wanna go? I can't all the lyrics. Okay, can we give him a little, let's, let's, let's. Brighten the corner where you are. Brighten the corner where you are. I cannot remember the other lyrics, but all I know <laughs> is brighten the corner where, where you are. are. That is a great way to end the show, people. That's very <laughs> important words. Brighten the corner where you are try to bloom where you are planted find the sun where you are you know find the sun and you will bloom mm -hmm. this has been creative excellence i mean it was a great show sitting down with ross and rosen <laughs> so join us next time in the corner where you are brighten the corner where you are I cannot remember the other lyrics, but all I know <laughs> is brighten the corner where, where you are. are.